Begin the Quran Dab Masech Tis Yavama Stav Tzadiches. Begin a level on Zav of the Tav of the Amr. The Gemara continues the discussion of the previous Dab. The Machlik is Rav Achav and Rav Sheshes, as we'll shortly explain. Rav Sheshes goes by the concept of Ches Chotar and Zav. Time we tend to join with today's Dab. We're going to discuss today's Dab, like we mentioned, regarding two brothers who are Megayim. We mentioned on the, on the previous Dab of Machlik is Rav Achav and Yaakov and Rav Sheshes. Rav Achav Yaakov held that it's, it's mutter for them to marry. The Amman and the Grusha of the other, what's called Ashes Achav, because they're not brothers, based on the halachic principle of Gesh and his guy, because Janel Dummy. So they're unrelated, and he's allowed to marry his brother's wife. Rav Shesha said, no, it's us and the Rabbanon for one to marry the Amman and the Grusha of the other. People will think a person may marry the Amman and the Grusha of a regular brother, they're going to make the mistake of comparing these two brothers, which we have in the previous stuff, was it specifically when their brother is Mina'em or Mina'av? Or is it only when it's, or is it even when it's mino'im? That was the machlekes, when did Rebach and Yaakov say it's committed? Akaponim, that's the machlekes that we're in the middle of discussing, that they're allowed to marry the brother's wife. The Gemara presents several prices in support of each of them. Then the halachic, the next mission, discuss on the base, Chamesh Nashim Shunis Arba Vlad, they say, the halachic of ramifications regarding the laws of Yibam, if you have five women who gave birth in a, and there was confusion in who they, the, the, the child, uh, who the mother of the child is in those five cases. So we begin the current dot. 11 lines down the Tavadi Yom and the Ches, as we mentioned, we're middle discussing this Machlik Zabach Yaakov and Roshesh's regarding two brothers who are Megayer, if it's permitted or forbidden to marry the, the brother's wife, which the previous step we had mentioned, an attempt to support Roshesh's, when we spoke about two brothers that were twin Geir, Said, but they can't do chalitza and yibum, and there's no chiv of Mishim Eishasa. So you must say, oh, there's no chiv, but it sounds like this is. And the Gemara says, no, even the Yisur, there wouldn't be, but because we wanted to mention the Seif Abu Chayavin, we learned the Reisha in Chayavin. We had another case we tried to bring a Raya, he said, Rasm Shleib Gdusha, but he doesn't Gdusha. We said that there is no mach, there's no, there was no Raya from that. That was the last thing that we said. Now we continue another Brisa in support of Ravacha Bayak. Mashma. Says, Gemara, let's hear from the following Brisa. Number of Yisi says, Maisa ben Neftayim Hager. There was a ger called Neftayim. Shanasa Eishas Achim Neimai. He married his maternal brother's wife. Uvo Maisa Lepnei Chacham. Story came in front of the sages. But Amr, they said, Ain't Eishas the ger. No problem. There's no marriage for a ger. The Gemara says, What? Ve'eli. So meaning, so there's no problem. There's no marriage. Ve'eli ger du Kaddish Chanam. Ve'eli Tavis Bukadushin. You can tell me that if a ger gets engaged to a woman, Kedushin not typus. What would that mean? A ger is like a regular Yisrael. Elaim Merad says the Gemara. No, what the Brisa was saying was in Isser Eishes Ach Leger. There's no prohibition of a married of, of the wife of the brother to the ger. Oh, okay, that's what the Brisa says. So the Gemara says, my love, isn't it that they were saying that this story with Neftayim that he was allowed to marry his maternal brother's wife is talking about the Nasva Ach, his brother who died that he's marrying his brother's widow, that he had married Kishu Ger when he was already a Ger, which the Ger of a Kedushan is a regular Kedushan. And still we see that it's permitted for his brother to marry the widow. Why? Because there's no brotherhood. Why? Because Kikat and Shadayla Adami. That's a Gravacha who says that there's no concern to marry the widow of the brother because they're not considered related. We're not, we're not geyser that it's going to be confused with Israel. So the Gemara, Allah, no, it's not a riot. We're talking about the Nasri Kishu Ebi Kachavim. We're talking about where this brother of Neftayim had married this woman when he was still not a Jew. And as Rashi adds on, that when they converted, he wasn't intimate with her anymore after they became Jewish. So therefore, there was no condition at all. That's why it's permitted for Neftayim in the brother's wife. Because... That's like the, like, like the case of cotton we had in the previous stop. That there's no ishes whatsoever, and it was never yidda'ah, la'achash, and his gadol. So therefore, that's why it was permitted for him to marry his brother's widow. But, had he been married to her after the geirus, then, yes, it would be forbidden, possibly like we said in Rav Sheshis. So the Gemara says, wait a second, if you're telling me that this brother of Neftayim had married this woman only when he wasn't a Jew, what's the chidush? that Neftayim, when he was Jewish, he was permitted to marry the widow of his brother. He says, what would you say? That we shouldn't allow a Ger to marry his brother's widow. Even if it was only his widow when he was not Jewish, because you might come to allow it when he 
it was already converted when he had married her after he was a ger, which that is a problem according to Rav Sheshis, and therefore you should make a ger even when there's Abi Kachav and Kamash Malam, but that's what the Chiddush of the story of the Brisa is. Again, going with Rav Sheshis, that it would be forbidden, but it would be permitted when there's still Akum. That's the Chiddush of the Brisa. The Master Tashim Al-Gura attempts to bring a similar type of a riot. The Amar Ben Yosiyah. This individual Ben Yosiyah said, when they went overseas to the maritime cities, I encountered a Ger who married his maternal brother's wife. So Marty like said to him, Who permitted you this? Amalei said to me, There was a woman that was a Giyaris, Veshiva Maneha, and with her seven sons, Al Safsul Zeh, Yasha, and Rabbi Kiva, and Vamash Nidvar. On this bench, Rabbi Kiva sat, and he said the following two Allahs. First of all, Ger Naisi Eshes Achim Imai. A Ger is allowed to marry his maternal brother's wife. And it says, and so he was saying, from that I learned that that was permitted. And also, Bamar, he said a second teaching, Rabbi Kiva. He said a passage in Yoyna, says, Behi Dvar Hashem al Yoyna Shein Isleiman that the word of God was to Yoyna a second time saying, and that's when he spoke to him again there in what we call Machta Yoyna, there in Sefer Yoyna. So what do you see that he spoke to him a second time? From Kiva said, Shein is Dibri Moshchina, that yeah, the Divine Presence spoke with him a second time, but Shlish is like Dibri Moshchina, but the Divine Presence did not speak with him a third time. Okay, that's the end of the story. Now, Ketonim, yes, one thing we see from this Bryce that says the Gemara is, the Ger no Yisei Yishas Achmimah, as we see that this Ben Yosiyan, said that he found this gear and he said, and this is what he did from Rabbi Kiva, that he was married to his maternal brother's wife. My love, isn't it talking about the Nasbi Kishu, Achim Kishu Ger? His brother had married this woman when he was a gear, and still we see that it was permitted for his brother to marry the widow. That's like Rabbi Achim Yaakov. Again, not like Rabbi Shishra. Rabbi Shishra taught that we are concerned the Asat Lechluf of Yisrael. These are two regular Jewish men yeah, the Gerim, but the two regular Jewish men who married women, so we would be concerned, they would be confused, and that we're saying that, no, we're not, so we see the Gravacha. So the Gemara Allah, again, the same type of answer, the Nazva Kishu Ebe Kachav, we're talking about where, that the, the brother had married her when he was not Jewish, and therefore it permitted for this Ger to marry the widow, because again, that's not going to be confused, because that was when he was not Jewish. So the Gemara Allah, what was the, then what would be the Chiddush? Well, again, the same type of idea. We should make a gzair that we shouldn't allow him to marry the widow of his brother when he was not Jewish. When he was still John, when he was still Mark, whatever it was, and then he had this girl that he was married to, that when she converts, you would think even then, you shouldn't allow him to marry because because he might come to do the same thing that when they were gay, him, which again, then, according to Rav that would be problematic. That's not a problem. Now, parenthetical, the Gemara says, that this whole idea of this story that this uh, Ger told Ben Yisiyon, that he heard of Rabbi Kiva and Shilom Neha, the Gemara says, Umi Mehemen? Is he even believed to testify that this is what he heard and therefore he's permitted to marry his maternal brother's widow? How could he even quote that story of Rabbi Kiva to justify what he's doing? It says, any Talmudic scholar that was ruling a halacha and he's coming along. So, in, meaning he himself is, is, is wants to act on a halacha that he's quoting. So it depends. In Amro, if he always used to teach this halacha to his students before the story ever came up, before the situation ever was applicable. And then he's saying, Yeah, then they listened to him because he was always teaching this before the situation ever came up. But Vimla, but if not, since this is a novel idea, maybe because of the story that happened, that's why he's saying it. So if it ain't Shemilo, you don't listen to him. So this is what happened over here. Here they're saying, what are you doing? Marrying your, your brother's widow? Well, how are you used to saying, oh, Chabged, Kiva, Kibata, I'm a lot of, you're not, not trusted in that situation. You only listen if you had been teaching this 10 years already before, and this never even came up, and then this story happened. So it says the Gemara, Iba is saying, if you want, you could say, This story was, but this guy had always been teaching this before it ever was applicable, before his brother, let's say, died. Or Iba is saying, if you want, you could say, Since he said, He was quoting a story as a proof that that did happen before, that that's also considered prior. Even though he, he was not ruling this prior, 
but they're storing it up in prior. So that's also considered as prior. But if you want, you could say, no, Shani Hacha here is different because they're coming Maisa Achirina. Besides this teaching of the permissibility of a Ger to marry his brother's widow, he quoted another story of Yonah ben Amitai, Bahada together. And as Rashi said, since he's believed on that, he believed on this because it's recognizable, truthful words that are received together. So it's like a migui, because since he's trusted regarding the drasha of Gibi, regarding Yaina, he's also believed regarding this, this idea of saying that the Geir is permitted to marry uh, Eishah Sacha. Now, Amman Maritz, the Gemara actually goes back to that second teaching of Rabbi Kiba that he quoted. He quoted the Pasuk in Yaina that says, Hashem Yoyna that the word of God was to Yaina second time saying, so the drasha was Shein is in only a second time did the divine presence speak with Yaina. Shlish is like Dibra, but did not speak with him a third time. About the Gemara asks, is that so? But if said, there's a Pasuk in Malachim base that says, who, who is who? It's referring to Yudavim, Ben Yayir. Heishiv as Gabul Yisrael, he returned, he restored the boundary of the Jewish people. Melavai Hamas, from when they're coming to Hamas, Ad Yam until the Sea of the Willow. Tidvar Hashem, like the word of God, Asher Dibe Biyad Abdoi, that he spoke in the, in the, uh, through the hand of his, his servant, Yoyna Ben Amita Hanav. So you see, another time that he spoke to Yoyna, so how can you say it was only two times? So Mavina says, yeah, you're right, of course he spoke to him other times, but Al Isik, Al Iski Ninve Karma, meaning the Divine Presence only spoke to him by that famous story of Ninve two times, but regarding this, that he's going to restore the boundary of the Jewish people, like the Pasuk says. Yeah, he could have spoken with him another time. Or another approach, you could say, come, he says that actually, this is what the Pasuk is saying. It's not saying, but it's saying, it's in Kidvar Hashem. It doesn't mean that he actually spoke to Yaina. It's like what he said to Yaina, which was, that he spoke in the hand of a servant of Yaina ben Amitai, Hanavi. Well, what does it mean, just like what he spoke to? Not, not that he said this. To Yaina. Like what he said to Yaina is what's happening over here in this Pasuk with Yerobim. Meaning, shame should not be in the middle of the time, just like what we know the famous story of Yaina, which is later in Kippur, that the, the, the Ninveh, what was supposed to be bad, turned out to be good, that they were saved. Kafka may Yerobim ben Yayesh, so too in the days of Yerobim ben Yayesh, not be in the middle of the time, it was switched from bad to good, but not that he actually told this to Yaina. It's just the same idea, and it was a Kidvar. Like the words that he said to Yaina, was happening in the days of Yudav. Now, Tais actually asked, says, but still, what do I mean? Don't we find a third time, even by the story of Ninveh, where it says, Hashem said to Yaina, I hate him all the way to the end of the story. He was, he was all upset, and he makes it this kikain to Yaina, this, this tree that comes out, and then yeah, Hashem says to Yaina, Is it good for you to be upset in the kikain? And I'm not going to be concerned about Ninveh. So we see it was the third time. So says Tais says, Oh, but that didn't have anything to do with Ninveh. That was about his tree. It says to Yisrael, okay, that's very good according to Nachman Yitzchak. Uh, that, that's, that's good according to the ones that hold that it was only by Iski Ninveh only spoke a second time. But what's with Nachman Yitzchak? He says that he didn't speak to him ever again. So it says that, that you, what you could say is that was the same day. And all considered as one prophecy. And therefore, wasn't considered speaking to him as another time. Al Kapam the Gemara goes back to this Machlik of Achma Yaakov and Hosheshes regarding if it's permitted to go ahead. For a gear to marry his brother's widow. So the Muslim Tajma is bring another raya in support of Rabbi Bayakim. Raisa said that you're allowed to marry the, the brother's widow of a gear. Gear Shahayla Dasa be Kedusha. If a gear, his birth was Kedusha, meaning his mother was pregnant when they converted. So he was born as a gear. But but the pregnancy, the conception was when she was still not a Jewish woman. So says the Bryce, so Yeshlish Erha Ahim, he has maternal relationships because again the maternity really is about the birth. The paternity is regarding conception, obviously. So therefore the English Sha does not have paternal relationships, but he has maternal relationships. Kate said also says the Bryce. So Nasa Khisiminaim. If he marries his maternal sister, meaning, as Rashi explains, this sister of his was born from the same mother when she was not Jewish. And then she also converted. The whole family came, this, the Baptist family, they come down to Jerusalem, they, they all convert. So he marries his maternal sister. So the rest of Yitzhi, he has to release her. He can't be married to her. Now, 
uh, even though it's not his sister, why isn't it his sister? Because Kakatan Shanaila Dami, she's converting. It's like a brand new person. Still, it's a gizir that he might come to marry the sister that was born after they converted. And they're already a Jewish couple. There is Karas. Why would it be Karas? Because the birth of both of them were Bekidusha, and it's his full fledged maternal sister, like a regular Jewish woman who gave birth to a son and a daughter. They're maternal sisters, uh, maternal siblings, which is his. So, although this is actually talking about with the sister, she was five, let's say, when they converted, and the, the whole family, their nice little uh, Puritan dresses, they come and they convert. And really, there's no problem because she's like a brand new baby. She's not related to anyone in the family. Still, because of that, if it would be the sister that was born 10 years later in the same family, if he would marry her, because remember, he was Leidasa Bekidusha, so, and they're from the same mother, so therefore, even the one that was from before, he has to release it. Now, Mina'av, on the other hand, his paternal sister, this is again, this is a little bit complex, the wordings over here, is Zikayim. He can stay married to. Why? So Rashi explains, because everybody knows this is the theme we spoke about in the previous topic. That there's no paternity for a non-Jew, meaning in regards to the subsequent like child when, who converts. And even if he's going to come to marry his father's daughter, meaning that was born from another woman after he converted, but not bothered by that because it's not his son. So therefore, meaning this person is not his son. He was conceived from him when he was not Jewish. So therefore, he could stay married with... Uh, this sister of his. And if she, if she was Messiah, if, if the Kedusha was, if the Leda was the Kedusha for the girl, for the paternal, then it would be also? If the Leda was the Kedusha, well, his, but his Leda wasn't the Kedusha. Oh, oh, oh meaning if the Leda, no, because the, the, the Hayrasai is what defines the father's role. Why don't we make a Gezera then? then? Okay, you know, make a Gezera, they can't marry because if it's a maternal, then there would be also. I hear if it would be maternal, but people know it's only paternal. When saying if it would be, it doesn't sound like we make that gazera of paternity and maternity. We, we, we're going to see we do have in paternity or in maternity itself, but it sounds like from one to the next that, that we know. People know that, uh, like Rashi's words, are call you even day now, but everyone knows you're not going to confuse that. But, but the father, he has no uh, non Jew, has, no, um, has no paternity for the child. Um, for subsequent uh, relationship to this to this child. Oh, so that's regarding his sister. What's her achos ha'av min ha'ein, which is his father's maternal sister. So his father's mother had another daughter. They 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 have the same mother. So yaitzi. So he has to if let's say he was married to her. He has to release a why, says Rashi. Also, a little interesting, because it's a zero because of a chesoy min ho'em. Meaning, really, there's no problem, because again, it's not related to his father. But because it's similar to his maternal sister, because it's his father's maternal sister, so because of the similarity, again, his maternal sister could be problematic. Because if the one of his sisters that's after the Gators he was born with Kedusha, and she's born with Kedusha, and they, that would be Echi of Kar. So we said even the one that was born even let's say before was Megayar is also problematic. Now, Akapon, the Machlis Min could be problematic, so even Achlis Av Min Ha'im, which, again, there's no real problem, he's not related to his father. But since it's similar, so we said that that's going to be forbidden. Again, Taisa has discussions on this. This is how Rashi explains it. And as we continue them in Beis, Min Av, however, if it's his father's paternal sister, so again, there's no maternal element over here. It's his father's paternal sister. So then he can, because they married her. Another case. His maternal, his mother's maternal sister. So here you see that you would have to the, the, really divorce because, again, since there's a maternal element, so therefore we have that, uh, and also it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the mother who he is related to because he was born by Kedusha. Min'av, if it's his mother's paternal sister, he says you got divorced. Why? Because your mother, there's the maternal element, which it's his mother, he was born by Kedusha. 
So therefore, uh, that would be problematic, even though really the mother's sister is not really related because it's her paternal sister, but it's his mother. But Chamam, they say no Yikayim. You can stay married. Why? Because you cannot compare it to, let's say, Achais Ha'av Min Ha'im. Because there you can make a Gzair because of Achais Min Ha'im. Like his maternal sister could be confused with his father's maternal sister, which is similar. But the mother's paternal sister is not similar to his maternal sister because it's paternal sister. So because of that, the Chacham is saying, you could stay married to the mother's, again, she was Megaya. So it, it just, there's obviously no real sister. It's only would be a Gezeira. And there's no reason to be Gezeira, even though he's related to his mother, obviously, because he was born with Gedusha. But the paternal sister is no confusion. As the Bryce explained, Shari Meir, I mean, because Meir said, the reason why you have to release, you have to divorce these women, is because Kol Erva Shimushum Shere Aim, like we were explaining, he just categorizes it. Says any Erva, that's because of a maternal relationship. Yitzi, you have to divorce. Because again, he was born with Gdusha. That means to say this is his mother. So if we could turn from maternal relationship, and, and those that could be confused at least. Mishum Av, any of those that are paternal relationships, like for example, his father's paternal sister, well, you kind that you can stay married to. <coughs> Moreover, umutu be'eshes achiv, and afilam imay like Rashi adds on, or the gears of imay, he's permitted in his his brother's wife, even if it's his maternal brother, which is older than him, which was born when the parents were still not Jewish, and this is what sounds like Ravacha, and Rabban were not geizer because of his brother's wife. Of his brother was born after him, that's younger than him, because by relationships, by relatives, the Rabbanu will gaze it. But someone that only comes through Kedushin, which a brother's wife is only an Isra that comes through Kedushin, that they weren't gaze it. So therefore, it says the Raisa, he's permitted in his brother's wife, even if it's his, bro- even if it's his maternal brother's wife. And that's going to be the main point. And he's permitted in his uncle's wife, his father's brother's wife, and Bashar Kalarais and all other forbidden relationships that come through Kedushin, Mutavah's life. What's that come last to That's come they call another type of uh, relation that's forbidden through marriage. It's Eich Sa'ab, the father's wife. Now, another case, we'll come back to what the conclusion of the Rai is, but the Bresa just finishes, Nasa Isha Ubita. A man marries a woman and her daughter, which as Rashi points out, this is not going back on what we previously talked about the case, which is this one, one long brysa. It's going on a regular gear. That when he was not Jewish, he had married a mother and a daughter, and they converted with him. Because as Rashi explains, if you would think this was going back on the case we were talking about of this guy who had his roster, Shalai Bagdusha, that he, he, his mother conceived him when, when she was not Jewish, but she gave birth when he's Jewish, and um, so such a person can't marry a, a woman and a daughter because he's a regular Jew. So how could he have married a mother and a daughter? Now, if you're going to say that he married Giyoyrois, that these women were converts, the mother and the daughter, so therefore they're not, rel- not related because they're like cut and janel dummy, so why do you need to say a ger? Even the Yisrael would be permitted to marry a mother and a daughter if they're Giyoyrois because they're not related. So obviously says Rashi, this case of Nasa Yishu Bita is going on the regular ger, who when he was not Jewish, had married a mother, Jane and Jane Jr. They had married a mother and a daughter. So now that he converted with them, the Allah has kindness achas or mighty achas. So he's allowed to take one of them as a wife, but the other one he has to release because, as Rashi explains, we don't want to com- permit the same thing by a regular Jew, by a mother and a daughter. People are going to see it. Here's a Jewish man with a long white beard married to a mother and a daughter. It might get confusing, and people might think a regular Jew is allowed to do the same thing also. And continues to write like a leichnas. Initially, he should not marry, which was going to explain what is this going on. And the last case is the Brisa, Mesa Ishtar. If his wife died, then Mutabacham Mesa. Then he's permitted his mother law because that much Rabban Wanak Gaiser, although he said that the, the woman and the daughter, the woman and the mother that he married, that he, he shouldn't, he should take one and let the other one go. But if his wife dies, then he's permitted in the mother law. And those who learn, no, then Asabacham Mesa. 
that no, he's forbidden this month. Which the Gemara is going to shortly explain what their machlekes is of these two different versions. Akabon, Katani Mihas. One thing we learned here in the Brisa was we said it was a long Brisa, uh, interesting. But one of the cases was Muta Be'eshes Achav. We said that any relationship that was through marriage, we said that those are not forbidden for the ger. Therefore, he's permitted his brother's wife. Aha, says the Gemara, my love is not told, my denosna achad kishu ger, that even if his brother, the ger, had married the wife of his when he was a ger, and even so, you see, that he's allowed to marry his brother's widow. This is going back from the machlekes, so still again from the previous daf. It's not like Rav Sheshul, it's like Rav Acham Yaakov. They were not considered the asla chlufa bi Yisrael. We, la- we allow the ger to marry his brother's widow. So the Gemara Allah, you know, the same way he had previously rejected, did not speak Shoei B'Kacham. It's told about where he had married her when he was not Jewish. Uh, okay, not, not Jewish, so therefore this is not going to be confused with a, a, a Jewish marriage. This was when he was still not Jewish. Now that he's Jewish, he, he didn't marry her. He wasn't, he wasn't intimate with her. So he says, Gemara Shem Ayla Memes, so what's the Chiddush then? He says, I'll tell you what the Chiddush is. Since I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm resolving this for Rav Sheishis, who holds it would be problematic if his brother, the Ger, had married her when he was Jewish. Maybe make Xero, not allowing him to marry his brother's widow, even when she was, when he was only married to when he was not Jewish. Because of maybe when he is Jewish, which would be a problem, we're saying it's not a problem. And if it's not a riot, it could even be like Rav Sheishis. Now, once we mention this, the Gemara goes back to explain, I'm a map. The Bryce had said, we said if a man was married to, when he was not Jewish, a woman and her daughter, now they're convinced <coughs> with the two of them, they come to the Bethlehem Tzedek and they say, look, you know, we can't have you married to this mother and daughter. Choose one and let the other one go. And then the next words of the Bible is, initially, he shouldn't marry. So he says, what are you talking about? Of course, if you're telling me that you have to, even if you really were married, and you're converting. And they say, look, we're sorry, we have to let one go. Do I have to tell you that initially he's not allowed to marry the woman and the daughter? Of course, we're telling you even after the fact you can't be married to the mother and the daughter. What are you saying? So Yimah says, no, it's not going on the last words of the Brisa. Hasam Kai, it's going on earlier in the Brisa. And this is what the Brisa is saying. The previous cases that the Brisa said that you're allowed to stay married to. For example, the paternal sister. And all those other cases which had paternity, not maternity, which we said, oh, okay, that's not forbidden because again, he doesn't have paternal relationships. His father, the non Jew, has nothing to do with him. And therefore, he said he's allowed to be married to those paternal relationships. And that's what the Rise is saying. Yeah, don't marry because ultimately it is confusing. He is married to his sister. And they're there, all the family, Simchas and Zosas, his wife. And people are like, what's going on? Are we married? Okay, you're right. Halachically, you're allowed to, but the Gitchila, that's what saying it was going on, but it wasn't going in the last case of the Isha Nebita. Now, also over there, we had mentioned um, uh, two different versions. We said that this woman and daughter that he was married to for 20 years and they converted to Judaism and he's got to release one of them. So he said, but if Mesa Ishti lets his wife dies, then Mutu Bechamai says he's permitting his mother in law. So although when he got converted, he had to release the mother, couldn't stay married to both of them. Once she dies, then he's allowed to go to his mother. But you can tell me about those who learned that no, also about his mother in law. So what's so what's the, the underpinning of this two different versions? So the Gemara explains it's a machleik is chadik rabbi shmuel and chadik rabbi kiva. The different versions are like rabbi shmuel and rabbi kiva. Man the asar, the one who says that it's forbidden to marry his mother in law even after his wife dies is rabbi shmuel. The aman that he says in general chamoyis lachamisa any person's mother in law after the death of his wife bisur hakaim. That prohibition remains in full force to marry to marry the shvigir. We got the ger because of Rabbanza. Therefore, simply by the ger, we made the same gizeh because we don't want to be confused with Judaism. We, if we let him marry his mother, people might think he might say, may have to do the same thing with the with, with the regular sort of mother, which is forbidden. But Aman the Shari, the one who says it's permitted after his wife dies, is Kriba Kiva. Meaning, because Dhamma, he says in general, a mother after the death of a wife, the prohibition gets a little bit lesser. Because by a Yisrael also, there's no punishment of Shreif anymore. Just that we say, Isha Bita Zimihi Be'ishi Shreifu, is only when the wife is alive. After the wife passes away, then actually gets downgraded, there's no more Misa, it's only S10, only when both are alive. When one of them is not alive anymore, it's only not going to be Shreifu. It's only going to be a, a regular Issa. So it's downgraded. So the Gabagir, look, that's very important. Again, the whole thing of a Gir is only Gizir. The Gir, halachically, really is allowed to marry the woman and the daughter. 
because they converted, they're not related. Okay, because of confusion, we say not to, but we'll only do the guys of when it's extreme, when they're both alive. When the wife is dead, then, and this we had this machlik of Rishman Rikiva, previously on the Tzadik Dalma Beis, and that's why you have these two different versions of the Ger, if he's permitted Chamoisai or not, are we making the Gzera there, if it's full force, yes, like Rishman, if it's not, like Rikiva, then it's going to be permitted. Now we thought, the next Mishnah, continue on the Halachas of Yibam, but a little bit more intricate than of regarding the situation when you're not sure whose child this is. Says the Mishnah, Let's say there was a, a blackout in the hospital during the times of the births, and you have these five babies that get mixed up, and they don't know whose child these from these five babies who's the mother, and each one of these women also have another son that they have back at home, which was not mixed up. Now. So these women, they don't know who's who. Maybe they make a little kibbutz and they're all like bring them up together. Or maybe they just, use, you'll take A, you take B, you take C. It doesn't make a difference. But the point is, they don't know who's the mother of which child. So they start seeing the complexion looks a little bit like that other guy, whatever. But they don't know. Now, these boys, the mixture, they'll call them. There's like the, the group of five. They go to therapy together. They the, 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 the mixed up boys, you know. They get older. They marry women. Vanesu. And then they die. What do you do with the halachas of Yibn Chalitza? Again, remember, each one of these five boys has a sibling somewhere, but they don't know who was the mother, which family they're from. And they got married, and they had a wife without children. And the group of five, they were on a trip together to Arizona to go for therapy a little bit, and this, that, and there was an accident, and they all died. What do you do now? Says the, says the Mishnah, what you do is as follows. So what you have to do is, the definite son of every one of those four have to do chalitza to one of them, of their wives, because each one is a suffix, Eishas Achim. Each one doesn't know this might be his brother's wife. So what you do is, there's five brothers of these five men. And they each do, you take four of them, they do chalitza to one of the women, the echad, and the fifth one will be meyav maisa. He'll marry her, the grass says, mamanashach. If he's the right one, if he's the brother's wife, great, he's doing the ibn. If not, the yavam already did chalitza, because one of the other brothers inevitably was the eish zah. And he's doing, I mean, he's the, the, the brother, the ach, the, the, the and he, he already did chalitza. Okay, that's the first one, right? Remember, there's five widows lined up over there at this communal levaya. So, woman number one, you have four of the brothers lined up. Chalitza, 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 chalitza. Number five, yibum. So Boom. We might have a confusion about yibum. What? The first brother, if it's not his brother's wife, then yeah. Okay. You do a mimer, you do kedushin, that's, and, then, and then you do um, isha miskad, is mikadish with five, with three different ways. One of them is bia, machta bia. And, uh, and you get married. That's number one. Now, you continue doing this uh, round robin. Who? Now, the guy who did Yibum, he really got his wife. Vishlesha, now the other three with him, they go to the next one, and they do Chalitza. The Echa, now a new fifth one, the last one, one of the, the other definite brothers who doesn't know who's the, his brother, Meyavim. He now does Yibum, Maman and then says Rashi, now you go, and the two already had their yibum ready with their wives at their side. They go to the third woman, and they do chalitza with the other two who don't have a wife yet. And the fifth one does yibum, and so on and so forth. So Nintsu comes out, you have arba chalitzas, meaning you're going to have four of the men always doing chalitza first. Because, as the Gemara is going to explain, not one of them is allowed to do yibum until all the other four does chalitza, because we're concerned it might be Yavam or Lashuk. He might not be that brothers, uh, that, that man's brother. So you'll always have four of the other ones doing chalitza, and then the yibam v'cholachas v'achas, and then you'll have the fifth guy doing yibam to each and every one. Now, says Rashi, as Gemara is going to shortly explain, the same thing would be that you could always have the same four guys doing chalitza to all the women, and the fifth guy, he'll marry them all. The Gemara is going to say that it's better to do it this way because you might end up getting the right one. And you, you might become a Mitzvah Yibam all five times. If you're very lucky, if you just came back from Vegas and you, every time you got 
you know, hit 21 and you always won. So then you would try this out. You might actually get from those five, you might actually get that one. Like this, you also might get, get the long goal five times. But if one is beyond the ball, at least once he'll get. See, you don't take him to AC. <laughs> He's too conservative. <laughs> so yeah, but you answer that, it's a good shadow. What would happen then? You might actually get a good shadow. At least then you'll know one time it's that you might close. miss every one of those five. Okay, it's a good shadow. So the Gemara says that, as we pointed out, but it has to be Vidavka Michlitz. It has to be specifically first to Chalitza from all the four of the five men that are there mourning, they don't know who their brother is, but they're all mourning. First get Chalitza from four of them, and then let the fifth guy do Yibum. But to have one guy, let's say, first do Yibum, then Chalitza, that you can't do. As we pointed out, the Kapoka by the Shuk, you might be encountering a Yibama married someone else, unrelated, which is a, a, a negative prohibition of terror. So the Gemara says, Mai hu la'achas. What, Why does the Mishnah say, and meaning after the first guy already, you had four brothers to the woman A, four brothers did chalitza, and then the fifth guy does the Yibam, and then we said when they go to the second woman, so, so that guy, the guy who already did Yibam, and three others, they do chalitza to one. As Rashi explains, the Gemara's question is, what bothers us if, let's say, the same four do chalitza to all of them, and that same guy who did even to the first one, do even to the second one and third one also. So the Gemara says, no. The lay tamer, we don't want you to say, let one guy do even to them all. No, each and every one is going to do even to one of them. Because Dilma Mastrami lay today, you might end up with the one that's for you. Meaning, it sounds like from the Gemara, that again, not like your question, meaning that we prefer to try, we're going to take our chances, we're going to risk it. And see, maybe we'll get, everyone will get their right Yavama, we're not going to do just one. And maybe that's the Habamina, maybe that's the Gemara's question. Maybe the Shail is saying, no, why not? Why can't he do it? For sure he's going to have one of them do it. Everyone says, no, we'll take our chances. And uh, that's how you'll get rich. You only know? kind of push it a little bit, you take some risk. And maybe everyone's going to get their own. Now, just a little complex wording of a case of, of a Brisa, the Gemara says, Miktsasan Achim. What happens if some of them are brothers, or Miktsasan She'en Achim, and some of them are not brothers? Which the words are very difficult, but the Gemara is going to explain. So Ha'achim Chatzim, the ones who are brothers will do Chalitza. V'She'en Achim Yam, the ones who are not brothers will do Yibam. So the Gemara says, My come, what are you saying? What, what does that mean? The brothers will do Chalitza. If you're not a brother, then you'll do Yibam. So Amr Safi says, Ha'achim this is how you have to read the Brisa. Miktsasan, if some of the, what Rashi calls the word Vadoim, he means to say the ones that were the definite sons. Remember, there was five women who gave birth to these babies that got mixed up. But before, this was their all their, their second child. Each one of them had a definite first child. So if some of the definite men, who are the survivors of these brothers who died, had achin to this, they were brothers to the mixture. Some of them were brothers mina'ah. They were mater, paternal brothers. They had the same father. Umagtsasan, now, there were some from these that were in the mixture who died that had achin min ho'ein. They were only maternal brothers. They only had the same mother. They were not paternal brothers. Which Rashi actually makes it a little hard for us. It gives us a case. This is like classic Yibamas. So what's the case, Rashi? It's on the second white line. For example, if Ruvain married Rachel and Chama, and Rachel gave birth to Ruvain, a son, Yesu. Okay, but then Reuven divorced Rachel, and she married Bayaz. And this Bayaz had a son already from another wife. Okay. Now Rachel, again, who subsequently married Bayaz, became pregnant, and she gave birth. Now, she wasn't the only one giving birth at that time. There was also Chana, who was the wife of Reuven, Remember, Rachel was married to Reuven. <coughs> now she's not. She's married to Bayaz. <coughs> but she gave birth at the same time as Chana, who was the wife of Reuven. And three other women, there was, a, there was a crisis, there was bombs coming everywhere. And these five women were holed up in the cave because they evacuated the, 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 the birthing center. And they took them to a cave and they all gave birth, screaming, whatever this is that, in the cave. Five boys. And they're all mixed up. No one knows what's going on up here. So it comes out that Yosef has this son Yosef who was born to Rachel and Reuven, which we know that who his father and mother is. 
But he has, in this Tarebis, in this mixture of the five babies, he has two brothers. One is his paternal brother. One is his maternal brother, as Rashi explains. The, the son of Chana, who was married to Ruvain, is his paternal brother. Because again, Yis Yisif was born from a union of Ruvain and Rachel. So that's, that's Ruvain's son, although it's not the same mother. Now, the son of Rachel from Bayaz is his maternal brother. So in this Tarevis, in this mixture, this Yisifel has two brothers, one's his maternal and one's his paternal brother. So and that's what the Bryce is saying as follows. Achen mino aim. What does this mean? Yosef, who has in this mixture a maternal brother, will be chalitza, meaning he's going to do chalitza to all of the women to exempt his paternal brother's wife. Meaning, paternal brother is allowed to do yibum. No, he cannot do yibum to any one of them, even after all the other four do chalitzas. Why? Because he might encounter his maternal brother's wife, which is a punishment of Karis. One of them, yeah, if he got the maternal brother, boom, he would hit the jackpot, be Yibum. But, but it might not be, it might be his maternal brother. Remember, he has this mixture of maternal brother too. So look, he's got to do Chalitza because it might be his maternal brother, but he can't do Yibum. It might be his maternal brother. Ah, but the Achen Menoach, the other four men, not Yisabel, that don't have this mixture, they only have a paternal brother. Oh, they're meyavmen. Each and every one of them, after the other four men do chalitza, they're going to marry the fifth one. So Rashi points out, it comes out, since Yosef is one of the five of the definites, comes out that one of the other four men is going to have to do yibum to two of them, or one of them is going to have five chalitzas instead of just four chalitzas. And that's how you explain the words of mitzas and shalvadayin, some of the definite has this Achen Mina'im for one of the Tarebis, what we call the Yisifel, and some of them do, are not Achen Mina'im, they only have Mina'av, so those that are Achen Mina'im will have to chalitza to them all, that's what we said, Cholten, and when we said that the one that She'en Achen, what does it mean She'en Achen? Not that they're not brothers. She'en Achen Mina'im, the only Mina'av, that's what we said that Mi'yav. Again, now we understand the wording of the Brisa, which was very difficult to read. The Brisa continues, if let's say, some of the definite men and their mixture is kahanim. And some of them are not kahanim. So kahanim cholzen. The kahanim are going to do chalitza to all the women and they cannot do yibum because since four men already did chalitza, maybe one of the men who did chalitza to her was her yavam. And this chalitza is valid. And we know a kain is forbidden in a chalitza. The brothers, the paternal brothers that are not kam, they can do yibam. And the final case is, if let's say mitzvahs and kahanim and mitzvahs and achim name, let's say some of them are kahanim and some of them are maternal brothers, obviously both of them are going to be able to only do chalitz and not yibam because both categories are problematic for different reasons. The, the ones who have achim and name are problematic because you might be uh, marrying your achim and name, which is a chiv of kars. And therefore, they're forbidden. And the ones who got them, they're not allowed because maybe the guy was really had done chalitza before and was right, and then she's a chalitza, which is forbidden to a guy. So therefore, no one's going to be able to do it. Everyone's going to have to do chalitza in that case. Thank you to any time. Okay. So it's a safe trip.